let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, um, we're just gonna do something super chill. Um, I have had so many questions of like, what do you need to start bag making? Because you can start slowly, of course. I know I did, but there are some pretty key ingredients to it. So that's what I'm gonna talk to you guys about today. Um, and number one, I would say is you need rulers. So if you started out as a quilter, you kind of have that stepping stool. If you're totally new, you don't necessarily have that. Um, this one is the first ruler. Well, not literally this one, I still have it, but this is the first ruler I ever purchased. And well, I guess two technically. So this is a six inch by 24 inch ruler. And this is going to be your best friend because it's perfect for straps. I don't know if, if you guys have watched any of my cutting and interfacing videos, you know that I use this ruler endlessly for straps because it's the perfect length for a lot of patterns, 24 inches, and if not, you can always add to it. Um, I have it marked out for 18 inches because that's um, a width that I use a lot. So this ruler is one of my favorites. I will never not have a six inch by 24 inch ruler. Um, and the next one is if you guys can't afford the zipper templates, I know they're pricey. Um, I can't live without it knowing now that I can live with it, if that makes sense. Like now that I have it, I don't wanna go back. Um, but just this one inch by six inch ruler was perfect for zipper pockets when I got started because it's less cumbersome than that giant one and it's just easy to have on hand. So a one inch by six inch ruler must have. I literally lost mine once and I texted my mom who was out and about and I was like, please get a Joann's and buy me a ruler. I'm in the middle of making like 12 bags and I lost my ruler, please. Um, so the next ruler that I have that I use a lot, I would say that this isn't a necessary thing, but it comes in handy. So if you don't have the six inch by 24 inch ruler near you when you're making bags, um, I bought this four inch by 14 inch ruler. And if this isn't amazing to have, again, near the sewing machine for strap placement, um, finding the center of a bag to put a nameplate on, something like that. So those would be the three rulers that I recommend grabbing. Um, if you know what works for you as far as a ruler type to have on hand, go with that. What I'm saying isn't a must have, it's not necessary, but it's just what I think would be most beneficial to someone who is just starting out. So the next thing that I would say is very necessary for, I mean, honestly, any sewist, but definitely bag making is good scissors. Um, I buy decent scissors because I drop them all the time, um, but I, I use the Fiskars ones and they're fine. You can sharpen them. Um, and I even keep them on scrap pieces of knit to have nearby or hang somewhere. And in case I drop it, I can maybe catch it. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely a good pair of scissors that aren't gonna hurt your hands, but will cut through vinyl fairly well. So treat yourself to some scissors. Um, and then a smaller pair of scissors for when you're working on zipper pockets. So these are the Ulfa precision snips that I love, but there's also, I don't think I have any anymore, but there are some that are sold at Walmart. They're called micro tips, super cheap, and they're very similar in size and preciseness for getting into zipper pockets. So definitely you need good scissors anybody. <laughs> this next one may not be possible for for all machines. Um, sewing with vinyl, if you're wanting to do that with bags, is a patience tester, to say the least. Um, and you're gonna want a walking foot. The walking foot can be very cumbersome for domestic sewing machines, so this is the one for that domestic Juki right there. And these are mostly meant for quilting because they're going to um, move the fabrics together. They're gonna walk the top layer and the bottom layer and it helps create a more even top stitching. 
You can also use a Teflon foot or a non-stick foot, but I, in my personal experience, have not found the stitch length to be consistent when using that because it still can kind of stick and that foot stays like this and the fabric underneath moves. So it can still kind of add some friction versus this one that's got the extra feet here to walk the fabric along. But you can see how wide it is. So that makes handbag making hard on domestic, um, which is why I don't do it. <laughs> Been there, done that kind of situation. I'm not trying to convince you to buy an industrial. It's not for everybody, I'm just saying. Walking feet can be very cumbersome. Um, but the next foot that you wanna make sure you have is a zipper foot. Um, and I have my friend Karen from Canada to thank I think it was Canada, um, for sending me these feet. I actually didn't have a zipper foot for my domestic machine and she said she had a bunch and she sent it over. Um, but you can see how narrow that is. And that's actually um, half the size of my industrial's walking foot. So this compared to this, this is only half the size of a domestic uh, walking foot. So I don't ever need to change out my industrial walking foot machine when adding zipper pockets because it's so narrow but you definitely want a zipper foot when you're adding zipper pockets to a bag um it's just gonna make it so much easier because again this is cumbersome um so those are the two feet i would recommend you have if you're going to be making handbags with a domestic machine the next thing you're gonna want and this again um you want to be very careful with a domestic machine when making handbags, when using double-sided tape. Um, so these I purchased from waywack.com and it's actually a leather tape. You could also use Dritz basting tape, which might be more beneficial with a domestic, however, might not hold vinyl or things in place as well as this leather tape will. Um, I would recommend grabbing half quarter inch with the domestic machine because you're less likely to sew through it with your needle. So you wanna be very careful when using the double-sided tape um, that if it's on your domestic that you're not sewing through it. They do make Teflon needles, so non-stick needles that can help, but I don't personally know if it works or not. So I would recommend this so you don't sew through it. You get me? Thumbs up if you get me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so yeah, that double-sided tape. Lifesaver. Um, I remember actually, so, little story time, sorry, side note. My friend Dana, who doesn't sew as much now, but she actually helped me tons when I started bag making. Um, we became really good friends that way. And she <laughs> recommended double-sided tape. And I don't know why I was thinking it was like spongy, I was like, you don't want that with your bag. Ew, gross. You're wrong. No, she was right. Double-sided tape, awesome stuff. Side note, when working with double-sided tape, I would get some non-stick scissors. These are just really cheap non-stick kid scissors so that you don't ruin your decent scissors with that. <laughs> the next thing I would recommend having on hand is a little stapler. You could use a regular size stapler too, but if you've watched some of my tutorials, when I'm sewing something that's rounded, having a stapler comes in handy so much. Um, if you can do it without, I'm praising you, you're amazing, but I can't do it without a little stapler um, to help me hold everything together when you're sewing. So, a little stapler. So this next one is going to differ depending on where you're located in the world. Um, I'm located in the United States, so we get Pellon very easily. Sorry, humble brag. Um, so when I started out, I used SF-101, which is a woven interfacing, and I used 809 or Craft Fuse, which is a non-woven interfacing, and then I used Pellon 71F or Peltex 71F, which is a fusible stabilizer. So interfacing and stabilizer are very different. Um, stabilizer stabilizes. So it's much thicker. It's got more rigidity to it. 
So that's something you wanna keep in mind. Those are the main three. And then there's a fusible foam or just a foam stabilizer that you might also need. Um, but having woven interfacing on hand, very necessary. Um, I might include a picture of the first bag I tried to make where I was like, you don't need interfacing? Who needs interfacing? What is this? The fabric's fine on No, it's not. You need interfacing. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so if you're starting out, those are easily accessible at fabric stores. Again, it's SF101, which is woven. Craft Fios are 809, non-woven. And then Stabilizer, which is Peltec 71F. Um, I find 71F very difficult to fuse, especially with an iron, um, but there you go. If you want to splurge a little, you want to learn how to make bags with a good material, um, I recommend trying Woven Fuse. Um, I know a lot of other places have started carrying like a heavier weight non-woven. Uh, it's just better quality, it's better made. It's a huge difference um, and it feels great. And then the other one is a non-woven, which is Decoville Light. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it endlessly, but it's such a game changer. People are like, do you really need help? Like, I mean, maybe you don't, but I can't live without it. Um, and then as a stabilizer, it would be Decoville Heavy, maybe two layers, maybe one and a half mix and match. Um, but I tell people who ask me about interfacing, like what combination would you use? It's all about how it feels to you. What I might like, you might not like. So that's gonna differ depending on what you like, but you can test um, interface and see if you like the way it feels, or you could even layer them together and just kind of feel it in your hands and think, is this too much? Does this feel like not enough? Um, so that's something you can try. But those are the interfacings I would recommend trying out or having on hand. A lot of times patterns will include what interfacing they recommend, so you can just kind of follow along with those as well. Um, and to kind of go along with that, you need a, an iron that gets hot enough to fuse it. All of them have different temperatures and different ways of fusing, so you want to make sure you follow those. Um, as a beginner bag maker, you're not going to want to go out and buy a heat press or a steam press, but if you get into it, you're going to need one. <laughs> um, I couldn't live without my heat press or steam press. They're kind of interchangeable. One just has more uses, the heat press does, versus a steam press. Um, a heat press cannot produce the steam, but you can use it for heat transfer vinyl if you have a Cricut or Silhouette machine, a vinyl cutter. I'm getting off topic a little bit, um, but definitely have a good iron that heats up to the temperatures required and patience. You guys, you gotta have patience with yourself um, to make those mistakes on bags. We don't start out perfectly. You're not gonna start out sewing like me. I didn't. <laughs> and I've been sewing for almost six years making handbags. So those are what I would say are the top things you need to become a bag maker. I wouldn't worry about the type of hardware you're buying just yet or the thread you're using. Those are things that are you're gonna learn as you go. Um, and I think it's smart to start out without the greatest materials because you learn more um, and you don't want to have invested $60 in making a bag only for it to not turn out as great as you would have hoped. So some people might say, buy the best now, but I'm thankful I started out as I did. So it was a basic sewing machine, basic thread, and you just slowly take these bites out of learning bag making that grow you. What even is that analogy? I don't know. You getting obese on bag making? I guess I did. I guess I did. Um, <laughs> anyway, and then again, as you kind of learn these things, I recommend getting a rivet press um, I cannot say that I would recommend Gold Star Tool. I know I have in the past and I take it back. I'm so sorry. 
Um, that's where I got my presses and I've had zero issues, but the company has changed the product since I purchased it six years ago, five years ago. Um, but I've heard good things about cam snap presses, Tandy leather snap presses. Um, I know they're a, a huge undertaking as well, but if you guys are in the sew whatever sewing group on Facebook, you can always ask questions. Um, and people are more than happy to help or you can search because that conversation has been had 85,000 times at this point. Um, so I hope you guys kind of learned a little bit of something in this video. Um, and if you have questions, ask below. I do go through and I try to answer when I can. Otherwise, someone else may be able to help you as well. Um, but thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed already, feel free. And I guess you can give it a thumbs up if you want. Okay, bye. Should I keep this hat on? <laughs> I don't know. I've never been a hat person. This is CJ's hat. No, we're gonna take it off.